the term Dajjal, it comes from a, a Arabic verb Dajjala, which basically means to cover something. And it's even used to refer to somebody who is a gilder or silver, a person who plates something with gold, gold plating or silver plating. The term Dajjal is used to refer to such a person. But the usage, the common usage that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, used where he meant or he indicated somebody who was what we refer to as being a liar, this comes from another usage of the term Dajjala which means to smear a camel with tar and it was the tar would be placed over the mangy areas of the camel. The camel had some kind of scabies or disease kind of things. So they would rub tar on it so when they're selling it, it wouldn't be obvious. Right? So it, it, this was a form of deception. So this is where the term Dajjal becoming the deceiver uh, developed. And when Prophet ﷺ described him, as I said, he didn't leave any details out. He described him to a T. He said that he would be blind in the right eye and that it would be like a floating grape, unstable, twitching in, his, in the socket. And that the left eye would also be defective. But he, was, he sees through this eye. And it would have a thick film, something like that of a fingernail, over it. And at the same time, it would be green like glass. He referred to it as being like glass because glass made in uh, early times tended to be, be green because of the, the chemicals which were used in the making of the glass. <clears throat> as you said, the Dajjal, Ainuhu Khadra Kazujaj. The Dajjal's eye will be green like glass. And his complexion will be ruddy white. Ruddy white meaning that he is white with redness in his complexion. These are all descriptions found in Sahih Bukhari, Muslim, etc. His forehead will be prominent and his neck will be wide. Right? His forehead prominent, meaning that it's protruding, it's large and it's protruding forward. And his neck would be wide. You know, something like uh, Mike Tyson, you know, he's got a neck that just seems to connect with his head, right? I'm not saying that Mike Tyson is Dajjal now, so please don't go and quote me on that. Huh? Anyway, the point is that he will, he'll be very powerfully built. I mean, this is actually people who are you know, heavily built. He will be described in that way, very powerful built. And his back, because of how, how many muscles, the muscles that he has, his back will tend to be curved, you know, almost like a hunchback, right, because of the bigness. You see, people will do a lot of weightlifting and that when they, they start to walk around, they start to walk around like this, you know. So he will be uh, like that. And his feet will be wide set apart. He will walk, you know, not normally people, their feet, you know, turn inwards like this. Well, his will be walking wide set apart. And his hair, he'll have a lot of hair on his head. It will be in curls or locks. And they would be, as the Prophet ﷺ described, like small headed snakes coiled together. And he will be sterile. He will not have any children. And according to the Prophet ﷺ, he most resembles Abdul Uzza ibn Qattan, or Qatan, ibn Qatan, from the Mustalaq tribe of Khuza'a, who died in pre-Islamic times. So he is described here as looking particularly like a person, a person who was known, which means we rule out all the other interpretations where he is, you know, the television you, know, you have some people say, you know, he's got one eye, like the television, it's just one big eye looking at you, so it's the television. Or some people say, well, no, it's Western civilization, you know, because when it says that he is blind in one eye, that's his, his spiritual eye, he's blind, he's a materialist. So they say material civilization. You know, a variety of other explanations uh, of the Jal, but the Prophet ﷺ's description clearly indicates to us that he is a human being. Furthermore, Prophet ﷺ said that there would be written between his two eyes on his forehead the term kafara, which would be visible to both the literate, literate believers as well as the illiterate believers. Some people have taken that to indicate that it doesn't mean literally the uh, word or the letters are written there, 
but that he would be recognizable. Well, no. The Prophet ﷺ said it's written there. So we don't try to give some other explanation. Uh, why an illiterate person would be able to read it, we know illiterate people in dealing in societies where there are a lot of signs, etc. After they've seen a sign enough times and it's been identified for them, they are able to identify reading the sign as a group, you know, even though they can't read if you give them a book to read. So we don't have to go to uh, unnecessary interpretations when uh, the reality uh, suits itself. Now, in terms of the powers, because why is it that the Prophet ﷺ said that a Dajjal would be the greatest trial faced by the Ummah, traits faced by the world, something far greater than anything that we have ever experienced before? Well, first and foremost, he will appear at a time of drought and starvation worldwide. And the Prophet ﷺ said, in that time, he will command... Allah will command the sky to withhold first one-third of its water and the land to withhold one-third of its produce. Then the following year it will be two-thirds. Rain will decrease by two-thirds and produce on the earth will decrease by two-thirds. And in the third year it will not rain at all and the crops will not grow throughout the earth. And when starvation reaches uh, this, this level, then Dajjal will appear. And when he comes, he will call people to believe in him, to believe in him as God. This is his claim. His claim is that he, in fact, is God. And he'll call people to worship him. And for those who accept him, and there will be signs which a person who is unaware of Dajjal, who is unaware of the teachings, will be fooled because he will do things which will give them the impression that this may actually be God. He will, for those people who lean towards him, who accept what he's saying, he will command the sky to rain and it will rain. And he will command the earth to bear fruit and it will bear fruit. For those who refuse him, reject him, he will pass by their areas and in the morning whatever stocks of food, etc. that they had, they will find it destroyed. So their situation will go from bad to worse. And he will carry with him what appears like a mountain of bread and meat. And of course, it's a time of starvation. Again, this is, this is what makes the trial that much greater. He will also have with him what appears to be a garden from paradise and flaming pits from hell with rivers flowing from both of them. They will follow him. And the rivers will appear, the one from paradise, white and cool, whereas the one which appears to be flowing from hell, which seems to follow him like liquid fire. And the treasures of the earth, wherever he goes, he passes in a region. Whatever treasures are in the earth will come out and follow him like a swarm of bees. And he'll be able to move through the earth like wind-driven rain. He will rapidly go from one region of the earth to the other, from one city to the other. He'll go through all the cities, towns across the earth, with the exception of Mecca and Medina. And he will camp outside of Medina. And when he camps outside it, there will be three earthquakes. And following that, with Medina shaking, those hypocrites and disbelievers who will be in Medina will come out and join him. And among the trials that he will do is he will call on people in different areas. He will call on them and ask them, if I bring to life your parents, will you believe in me that I am your God, your God and your Lord? And of course, people in their ignorance, believing that it's God alone who can resurrect, which is true, 
but that it may appear, resurrection may appear to them when it is in fact